In this video, I'm exploring who the Imperial Fists are and have a go at painting one in the heavy metal style. I start by going onto the Games Workshop website where they have loads of great images and turnarounds so I can have a good look at how the Heavy Metal team paints their miniatures. The Imperial Fists are the seventh of the original 20 Founding Legions created by the Emperor of Mankind. Resolute warriors and willing to give ground and will always make that ultimate sacrifice if it means victory. Pride and never given up holds a strong grip on the Imperial Fists and their stubbornness and resolve has led many times to needless loss of forces and many times had to rebuild their chapter. Now I've decided how I'm going to paint this Imperial Fist, it's time to get started. I really wanted this model to portray the stoic, unrelenting character of an Imperial Fist. There's loads of great poses in the Intercessor kit, and the Marine stood staring down the sight of his bolter gives me the feeling of the Marine standing its ground no matter what he faces. Because of their skill, the Emperor of Mankind tasked the Imperial Fist to fortify the Soul System and terror itself. The palace became the most formidable fortress in the galaxy, earning them the title Defenders of Terror, and soon would have to live up to that name when the galaxy erupted in civil war known as the Horus Heresy, and the palace became the final battleground against the forces of chaos. I built the marine and sub-assemblies to make it easier to get all the details and mounted them on some cheap game blocks using some paper clips and super glue. The Imperial Fists are best known for siege warfare, raising and destroying fortifications like no other. So I want to make a base that would put my marine in a ruined urban setting. Regal Dawn, the Primarch and Dream Father of the Imperial Fists. He was one of 20, one for each legion of Space Marines. All the characteristics and behaviours a Space Marine Legion has, they inherited from their Primarch. And after the Emperor was interred into the Golden Throne at the end of the Horus Heresy, Rogel Dawn felt a great sense of failure and bitterness. I used Wraith Bone Spray first for the undercoat because the yellow paints go onto it really well and you get a nice vibrant colour which I want for that heavy metal look. So using an airbrush I painted Uriel yellow to get an even solid colour to start with. But that doesn't mean you can't do the same thing with a brush, it's just going to take longer with multiple thin layers as you build up to the same solid yellow. Space Marine Legions were split and there was a lot of unrest after the Horus Heresy, and while the Imperium of Man was regrouping and reorganising, Regal Dawn instead continued the fight against the remaining Chaos forces, seeking revenge fueled by a broken pride. This delayed the Imperial Fist being broken down into chapters, which would see no one person have the full power and command of a full Legion of Space Marines ever again. I blocked in all the colours first so I could clean up all the colours at the same time before any highlighting was done. Space Marine Legions would now be broken down into 1000 strong chapters outlined by Reboot Gulliman, the Primarch of the Ultramarines and only instated Codex of Starters. The Imperial Fists, resentful that they were the ones to defend Terra, should now have Reboot Gulliman dictate matters of war and duty to them. It was time to add some depth to the model, so starting with Avalon Sunset thinned down with two parts of water, I painted this into all the recessed areas creating a soft shade first. I 
I now wanted to bring out the panels of the power armor more, so I used Reichlin Flesh Shade next to darken the recesses. I finished off using Norn Oil to wash all the other areas of the model. Eventually, with the inevitable signs of civil war rising again, and Dawn seeing what ruinous path his pride had taken him on, the Imperial Fists would adopt the new ways of the Codex Astartes, determined to prove themselves the equals, if not better, than the Ultramarines. They committed themselves, and like other chapters, who would deviate and modify the new doctrines to suit their needs. It was time to clean up all the areas before I moved on to doing all the highlighting. Heavy Metal is most known for their many layers of highlights. I started with a chunky highlight of Flash Gitch Yellow. Using Phalanx Yellow, I painted on the edge highlights next, and to make it easier, I ran my brush along all the edges I could. Otherwise, I just did my best painting a thin line to create the edge highlight. Only the spot highlights to do now. I used Dawn Yellow on the parts of the armour where I wanted the edge to be more pronounced. Time to highlight everything else. The Imperial Fist chapter is organised into 10 companies. Hardened veterans, battleline troops, reserves and the newly initiated all organised into different companies to help support the chapter in many different roles a war zone would need. The third company, marked by the red trim on the shoulder guard, are perhaps the best representative of the nature of the Imperial Fists. Led by Tor Garadun, the longest serving battle company leader, they fight relentlessly despite the losses sustained to achieve victory. It is deemed so necessary to keep this company at full strength that the usual progression of newly initiated is overridden and immediately transferred within the third's ranks. I finished off painting the Imperial Fist with glowy lenses. I want to give the base a lot of texture, so I used a lot of dry brushing and washes. The only thing left to do now is the final assembly and transfers. I've linked a video in the description so you can go and see how I apply transfers to my models, so make sure you go and check that out after you've watched this. The official homeworld of the Imperial Fists is Terror itself, but their true home and base of operations is a phalanx, a battle station the size of a small moon and relic of the forgotten dark age of technology. Its firepower dwarfs entire fleets and its armour enough to withstand dying stars. He sat dormant until Dawn was able to make it operational again, gifting it to the Emperor when his mighty crusade to reunite the lost worlds of humanity reached Dawn's homeworld. Even in the current era of Indomitus, the crusade never ends. Belief that the many scattered worlds that have not known the Emperor's rule in centuries should not be abandoned and be brought back into the protection of the Imperium. There is no fortress that cannot be cast down, no shelter to be found the mocks the rubble, and nowhere to hide from their vengeance. Thank you for joining me on this journey, learning about the Imperial Fists, and I really hope you enjoyed my efforts to paint one up in the heavy metal style. Remember, pride is a path that will lead to destruction. 
and I'll see you in the next video.